and welcome to Murphy's Garden and you join me on a nice day we're now in January getting towards the end of January now and um, what I want to do today is just make a start on the rose pruning I've got my secretaires Falco secretaires and I'm going to start with the easy ones these are the Desdemona roses that which are fairly newly planted they only went in not autumn gone but the autumn before so they've been in just over a year and so they're fairly easy to do I've made a start we've got four quadrants here so Got another three to do so i'll just show you what i've done so far and what what we need to get on and do so these are the ones we've done we've got um one two three four five six seven rose plants fewer bigger than others because some of them are the um little cuttings that we did so what we're trying to create is this sort of open goblet effect we don't want any crossing branches um so i've really i have pruned them I often start quite light and then I go back and I'm a bit um, more severe with it, but I, I want to get the, um, the shape right. So that's what I've done so far. I've got a lovely little robin up in the um, pleached horn beam, keeping me comp company and singing to me, which is lovely. So let's move on to the next one. So we'll start with this one. This is, is quite a good one to look at because there's a lot going on here and it's a bit of a tangle and a bit of a mess. So the first things that you've got to do I get rid of any dead branches so you can see I come around here can you see that one that one's dead that is really dead that one will need to come out um, any weedy little branches like this one that's not going to do a great deal so you want to get rid of these these small ones and then and there's some small ones in here and that one's also crossing so it's coming over here and it will cross with that one so ones like that we don't want um, there's some dead in that one there. Um, so we want to keep the nice big stems, so these thicker stems we like. Don't like that one because that's that's dead. Um, we don't want the leaves either. The leaves, there's a lot of leaf litter as you can see. So I need to go around picking all that up, have good hygiene so that we avoid any um, diseases. Um, this is one of my little cuttings next to it, which is um, it's quite small, but we've got this massive long stem that's going all the way up here so I want to encourage it to put on more growth down below here so I'll cut some of this back and I will cut this big stem quite far back just to encourage it to I don't want these very long stems I want kind of bushy plants and then while we're at it we've got the the clematis here as well so that's the princess Kate clematis so that one will be cut right back to the the base as well so got a lot to do um, as I say we'll clear up all this leaf litter as well and then we'll just make our way around all the different um, roses and I think as I said there's about seven in each okay we'll make a start I hope you can see try to angle the camera as best I can right I have my tub in hand so I'm going to take out these small stems And when you make the cut, just cut back to an outward facing bud and that will encourage your rose plant to be sort of goblet shaped and nice and open without any shoots going growing inwards. You want it to be growing outwards. something like this I'm gonna cut it I've got an outward facing bud I've got one there and I've got one there I'll perhaps just do it to there now this one is a branch that's kind of in the middle of everything so I could either take it out completely or try and look for one that's going to come off here which that one is We'll take it out there so we'll get some growth coming out this side. 
So we'll just pick up the um, leaf litter, just that makes for good hygiene and hopefully stops any diseases entering to, into the rows. And then the other thing we need to do is add just a little bit of manure around the, the base of them as well. So we'll scrape back the um, strolch and just add a little bit more manure. These were given a lot of manure when we planted them, so they should be pretty good for a while, but we will put a little bit on and also just some feed as well in the spring too, some rose feed. So that's that one done. We've got that nice open, open habit. And same again, this is another little cutting, so it'll be quite hard on this one. Encourage it to put on a bit stronger growth rather than this spindly growth. And now for the rest. So these are the roses after the pruning, so it looks quite severe. Um, but um, the general rule is if you've got weak growth, the harder you cut, it's quite counterintuitive. You tend to think if it's weak, then don't cut it back quite so much. But the opposite is true. If, the, if there's weak growth, cut it harder back and it will come back stronger. So um, I have some of the growth here was quite weak, especially the um, little cuttings that I did. They're not very strong so I've cut those quite hard and um, we'll just see how they respond in the spring and in the summer and I think as you can see the, the ones that I did first probably over here probably cut those less hard than the ones I did just a minute ago I get braver as I get in, more into the job but anyway I might revisit some of those again but yeah that's it done and I might try and get the strolch is still holding up quite well but I might try and get Another couple of bags, perhaps, just to top it up a little bit, because it's been really successful. Now, over here, we've got another shrub rose. This is a big one. Um, it's got a bit too big. This is an Olivia rose, Austin. Um, I kind of treat this a little bit like a climber, I suppose, because I have got it growing up the trellis, and I do tie it onto the trellis. There is also another climber, if you can see, in the background, too. So we've got quite a lot of work to do here. There's lots and lots of um, leaf litter. And just generally this area looks a real state. So I want to get on because we can see this from our house and it looks a bit unsightly. So I'm going to get on and tackle this rose. I think I did cut it back last year, but perhaps not as much as I should have done because it looks a real tangly mess. I'm going to go in quite hard. It's sometimes a little bit daunting knowing where to start. So I'm just going to start by removing the leaves so I can kind of see where what I'm doing. So I'll do that first and then I'll again begin by removing the spindly growth, any disease damage or crossing branches and then just make some decisions on um, what gives a nice outward um, goblet looking appearance and just trying to let lots of air flow around the plant as well. It's, it's taken me quite a while so I'll just show you the end result. So this is the Olivia Rose Austin shrub rose now cut back, being cut back by about a third so that's a six foot um, trellis panel and what I want in this area is as you pass it the rose blooms to be about eye level or just below eye level which it now will be. So that's good, that's all done and I have gone in quite hard and I've actually because what was happening we had a big tangle between this rose and the climbing rose at the back so they're now quite separate you can see the two separate plants and all that remains to be done is just to mulch the base of the rose with some horse manure which we've got and um, I'll do that next and then we'll come on to um, you see this climbing rose at the back I've just tied that in and again trying to get as much cover all over the trellis but we'll come on to climbing roses going to make a start on the trellising down the rest of the garden um, and I'm going to go through what to do with them um, climbing roses but for now thank you very much for watching and this area is now looking a lot tidier I've cleared away all the leaf litter so see you in the next video bye for now Thank you.